Kalendras Maiklas Vimeris yra UNESCO ir Europos Tarybos kultūros politikos ekspertas. Edakal kultūros politikos ir kultūros valdymo instituto steigėjas ir direktorius. Dirba vienos universiteto politikos mokslo instituto bei teatro, kino ir medijų instituto dėstytojų. Jis yra asmeninės Austrijos šveitimo ir kultūros ir menų ministro patarėjas bei Europos komisijos Europos kultūros ekspertų tinklo narys ir aš tai jis gal pristatys mums pranešimą humanistinėje tradicijoje Austrijos švietimo sistemą, Humanistic Tradition in Austrian Education System. And Michael, what is yours? Thank you very much. I don't know, Ivalinis, what you have said about me now. I think it was too much. But I'm very glad to be here. Uh, and I'm also a little bit insecure not knowing what I could add when you already <laughs> gave a rather consistent uh, theoretical uh, frame of that, uh, what uh, this conference is about, and you also saw, already saw practical uh, examples. Uh, altogether, this gives me the feeling we are already within uh, a process, and uh, to be uh, honest, uh, I not often have seen so much enthusiasm, so much energy within uh, a scene as I experience uh, here. Uh, congratulations first and thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, conference, particularly uh, to Wilder and the colleagues. This is a great chance also for me to learn uh, what it is about. Uh, two small countries meet Lithuania uh, and Austria uh, and we'll see uh, what we can do together and what brings us uh, together. But let me start uh, with a sidestep uh, because I'm still very spellbound uh, reading uh, a new edited and a new published book by Stephen Greenblatt uh, called uh, Swerve. Uh, and the story uh, is about the private secretary of the Pope, Johannes Paul XXIII, uh, in the early 15th uh, century. This is uh, the only name of a pope uh, that appeared two times uh, in the 15th century and then also uh, in the 20th century. But there had been a lot of problems. Uh, the pope had to go to uh, Constance. Uh, he had to uh, displace from office. And he had this private uh, secretary called Pocho Bracciolini, and this colleague was very much in favor to search old manuscripts. Manuscripts, Roman, Greek uh, manuscripts. And he went around and came to a cloister uh, in the thousand part of uh, Germany. And there he found one manuscript by Lucrez, De Rerum Natura. And it was the very last manuscript uh, he found. Uh, there was no one left uh, uh, around. And now uh, Stephen Greenblatt's argument is that the finding of this manuscript started a real new era and brought the Renaissance and the paper the text, uh, De Rerum uh, Natura, is a long poem. And it is in the after, uh, it's, it's following the main ideas of Epicur, and it is rather about thinking maybe God and the gods are not interfering in all, all, uh, all our, our uh, lives. There is a sentence in the poem Quo queque modo fiant opera sine divum. What wants to say that because of that it follows that things happen without gods. And you can imagine in the late phase uh, of the uh, uh, medieval, medieval uh, era, this was quite a provocation because up to that time everything came from God, and it was we, or the people then, that time, had been fully dependent on what the 
guards were saying and in which way they were interfering. And then nobody comes <coughs> from ancient time and tells a story, we are responsible ourselves. It's our job to live in the world and to define the circumstances under which we are going uh, to live. And it's about 60 years later, after uh, this detection uh, of the manuscript, when Botticelli painted the Drei Grazien, and you may see they are rather different than the, or, uh, the normal medieval painting on re religious uh, uh, issues. It's a kind of new freedom. It's a kind of new liberty, uh, liberty. And indeed, this was the era where the Renaissance uh, started, where all that started or restarted uh, what uh, uh, Ivadinis uh, talked uh, about when a humanistic uh, tradition uh, started. Uh, and we now can speak of a humanistic uh, education. And I'm now not going to in all the details what humanistic uh, uh, education is about. But there are maybe two major messages uh, to be taken uh, into account. And one is that humanistic tradition focuses on a student's choice and control over the course uh, of their education. That means it's in the power of the students to learn. And it's not from above somebody tells you, is it God, is it the teacher, uh, or somewhere else. There is a responsibility of the individual learner. The learner is in the center uh, of the uh, learning process. And there's a second uh, dimension uh, that humanistic tradition believes that both feelings and knowledge are important to the learning process. When we are in a tradition of schooling where knowledge plays the most important uh, role, then already at that time both dimensions came up. A full personality is about knowledge, but it's also uh, about uh, emotion. I did not introduce myself. Uh, I now try to do that. Uh, personally, uh, I have a history which is related uh, to the <coughs> idea of creative partnerships. Uh, when I was 20 years, uh, the head of an institution called Austrian Culture Service, which was a kind of arm's length uh, organization uh, of the Ministry of Education and Culture to promote cultural activities in and around uh, school to help to support the idea of uh, school culture. Um, in 2003, I changed uh, my uh, job uh, and uh, started an uh, initiati initiative called EduCult, the combination of education uh, and uh, culture, uh, and organized the, the, since then studies, evaluations, uh, consulting, uh, and organized also uh, particular uh, projects. And by that, we are very much affiliated with the ideas uh, of the humanities, but we also use uh, methods of uh, social sciences. Uh, I just uh, list here few projects like diversity and cooperation. This was uh, a first effort to map what is going on in the field of cultural education uh, in uh, Austria. Arts Count was a project to ask the head teachers and uh, directors uh, on their, um, uh, on their um, vision, on their view on uh, cultural education. Uh, we are also involved in European uh, projects, work together with uh, German foundations. Uh, from that, maybe I can give you some uh, insight, not just from the single point of uh, the Austrian perspective, but also compare that uh, with uh, other uh, initiatives. We are located uh, in the museum's uh, quarter uh, of Vienna, which is a huge cultural uh, space. Uh, with uh, uh, a lot of museums, but also contemporary uh, cultural uh, activities uh, also 
the creative and cultural industries uh, can be uh, found there. And there is a typical approach we try to use when we evaluate not being the controllers, but something, uh, something like uh, critical uh, friends uh, to accompany a uh, project. <coughs> I will go more in detail uh, of uh, that. I was asked not just uh, to give some uh, insight of what's, what's happening now, but at the same time uh, give some ideas how it became like it is uh, today. Uh, not everything happens by accident, but follows particular uh, traditions. And when we speak about Austria, I can imagine that in your minds there are quite uh, some stereotypes when it is about Mozart, New Year's uh, concert, state uh, opera. Uh, here you have the uh, Fine Arts uh, Museum. And I just wanted uh, to uh, bring into your mind that these big cultural institutions uh, of Austria were developed at a certain political stage, the late phase of the Austrian-Hungarian uh, monarchy. And this was a quite absolutist uh, regime. And the regime wanted to present that we are important, not just politically, economically, but at the same time, culturally. And if you look at this kind of architecture, you will easily see this is not just let's talk about culture. It's a representation of something. It's a representation also of a uh, political uh, power. I mentioned that because it makes then clear that culture at that time was not just seen as let's bring, pe to get, bring people together, let's integrate them. The opposite is true. It was about uh, social distinction. It makes clear that some people belong to that and identify with that. And the big rest has nothing to do uh, with that. So culture was definitely seen as a mean for social uh, distinction. And we have the same thing also within the school system. And you already started the, this kind of uh, discussion. We had a long tradition, a long humanistic tradition of the gymnasium where these values of full development of the personality uh, with singing, dancing, and all that, what you mentioned, had been a part of the curriculum. And for the big rest, uh, for the blue color worker, this was not uh, the case because they had uh, been uh, trained uh, to fulfill a certain role within the, is it the agricultural system and then uh, the uh, industrial uh, system. And you can imagine that there had been also forces against uh, that, uh, because at that time, uh, school uh, was more or less uh, identified uh, with uh, the unconditioned submission under, under given realities. So the pupils should go into uh, a given uh, reality. They be should become uh, brave warriors. Uh, industrious uh, workers, but the idea of being creative, this would have been pure uh, nonsense uh, and wouldn't make, have made uh, any sense. And there had been counter movements uh, against this idea uh, of uh, traditional uh, schooling. The most important under the umbrella uh, definition of reform pedagogy was the so-called Arbeitsschule, a critique of the paternalistic uh, education, uh, they wanted uh, to broaden the definition of uh, education uh, and uh, learning. And I present to you one of the main figures, Eugenie Schwarzwald. She was a bourgeois uh, woman 
not only engage in education development, uh, but at, uh, at the same time uh, also uh, towards uh, the education of young uh, women, uh, as you can uh, see. But anyway, they defined uh, a new way of teaching uh, and uh, learning, and there had been the pillars uh, of a new school that not everything should be the same for everybody at the same time. Uh, instead of that, there should be a specialization uh, where there are particular pa uh, talents. Uh, what means that all of us are uh, 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 dispose uh, of uh, particular talents. And maybe it's the job uh, of the school to find out what are the specific talents and how to promote this uh, talent, not doing the same thing uh, for all of the children, which is a very fundamental question, I would say, because in democracy, everybody should be treated uh, in the same way. But nevertheless, we are equipped with different uh, talents and what, how school can react uh, to uh, that. It was also about uh, the focus on particular subjects at a particular uh, time, what means not doing the same thing all the time, but concentrate to a certain uh, th thematic uh, uh, project and then go uh, to another. It's again this idea of autonomous learning during all school phases. Give the youngster the chance to co-define how to learn, which way to learn, uh, what uh, to learn, uh, and make the uh, uh, individuum more uh, autonomous also in this uh, <coughs> respect. And the, f f uh, the fourth uh, dimension is learning in touch with uh, realities. What means school is not a closed shop. Uh, instead of that, uh, it relates to uh, the realities of everyday uh, life. And the more school is able to reflect that, uh, to take that into account, maybe the better it is. I just give you that example uh, because it's 100 years old. We are not talking about, about the new phenomenon. We had that already, this kind of discussion, 100 years uh, ago. And obviously, we are not at the end uh, of the discussion, because this kind of knowledge has been developed uh, already a long time uh, ago. And so I just ask you uh, and your personal uh, experiences, where are we now? Because we have different types of schools uh, at the same time, also uh, in Austria. Here I would say maybe this is rather uh, traditional. Have the teacher in front uh, and ask for, can you repeat what I have said? Because I know everything and I make you learning something and then you got it and you're, now you tell it uh, to me. And this is about using uh, some repetitive uh, competencies, uh, but forget about uh, the big rest. I have another example of a school, it's in Denmark, in Örestad, where you immediately can say these are quite different uh, circumstances uh, under which uh, it is uh, learned. Maybe this is more equipped to the full body presentation uh, of the uh, learner, the body and the space plays a role for uh, learning processes. It's not only what we learning, it's equally important how we learn, and of course it's also important where uh, we learn. It influences massively uh, uh, in which, uh, uh, what are the results. You can easily see, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure all of, uh, of you can Im uh, immediately experience that this is another learning setting than it is uh, here. And the chance is here to be autonomous, to be your own master of the learning uh, process uh, is better represented as it is here. <coughs> the authorities 
react uh, uh, to uh, the phenomenon. Since the 1980s, the Ministry of Culture and Education is very, very much in favor of a new culture of teaching and learning. And they published already in the 80s uh, a decree on holistic creative learning uh, culture. And you can find all the slogans uh, you already know. It's creativity as an interdisciplinary guiding principle in education. Uh, this what, that is not bound uh, to any specific subjects. Uh, it uh, relates uh, to multiple potentials uh, of an individual's per personality. Uh, and learning through play is important. Uh, it should be about pleasure uh, and interest in the uh, learning uh, process. I dared to, uh, to write down also and what's about the reality. We have a lot of positive wordings. We have a lot of positive programming in this respect. And when we look at the reality, I don't know if we are already uh, there. Me personally, I was in an expert group of the Austrian ministry and I often asked the responsibles, what are you going to do with that? How to implement that? How to make that the main reality? Uh, of uh, school and obviously these old forces are stronger than we thought uh, and the realities look uh, different. i give you a second example. Don't worry, I don't make you reading uh, all that. i just give you the example uh, of uh, the wording uh, of the key competencies, the European program on key competencies uh, within the frame of uh, lifelong uh, learning. The eighth competence is about cultural awareness and expression and you find almost everything what we wish. It's about knowledge, awareness, cultural heritage, major cultural works, cultural and linguistic diversity, uh, important of aesthetic factors, uh, appreciation, we could uh, go on for a, a long time uh, in this um, uh, relation. So what I want to express uh, by that is a kind of evocation of how it should be, but we are not talking about the realities, is it in school or is it uh, outside school. I try to find some reason why it is, and now it gets more contemporary. When I have these titles of art education, arts education, cultural education, uh, creative uh, education, sometimes I am not sure that we really know what we are talking uh, about. In your minds might be very different concepts uh, of that, uh, what we are uh, talking uh, about. Uh, how can we define more clearly what we are talking uh, about? Is it about clear defined aims uh, and objectives? Uh, and how can we learn uh, from each uh, other? I have sometimes uh, the impression, particularly on European uh, level, that this kind of, not to say propaganda, but this kind of uh, programming is also about avoiding looking closely uh, to the uh, realities. Because it would be also necessary then knowing more about what is creativity, what we are talking about uh, that, and I'm very glad that uh, Guy, hopefully in the afternoon, uh, will give us um, a, a clear, uh, a clear uh, definition uh, of that. But sometimes, let me be for a moment uh, also provocative, there is maybe also a certain misuse uh, of the term uh, creativity. When we look at the current crisis, the current debts, financial uh, and uh, economic crisis, there are quite reasons to say that the bankers had been rather creative in producing a uh, lot of financial 
products. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, look through uh, them. By using their creativity, there was a lot of misuse. And it's not because they hadn't been creative, but instead of that, maybe they had been too creative and there had been no limitations. There had been no political uh, limitations to say what <coughs> is a positive outcome of the, uh, of the creative process and what hasn't been uh, a positive uh, outcome uh, of that. So let us look more closely uh, at uh, the uh, definition, what we mean, the, and, and what are the expected uh, outcomes of it. And there is another uh, point when we talk about uh, creativity as a full positive word. At the same time, we had this discussion on reform pedagogy. There was a famous uh, econo econom uh, economist, uh, uh, Hans uh, Schumpeter. He, uh, he did not only talk about uh, the creativity as a tool for production, but he talked also about the dimension of creative destruction, that it is also necessary to make decisions, to destroy something that something new can uh, happen. It's also about deciding uh, something to leave behind uh, uh, something. It's not just this idea of add and add and make more and more. It's about decisions. It's also to leave behind uh, things that are not anymore uh, appropriate. <clears throat> I'm not the one to give you uh, the definition of what creativity is about, but one idea I want to share uh, with you, maybe we should take into account when talking about learning, then learning is a creative uh, process uh, as a whole. You cannot divide creativity to just to be uh, managed in some particular <coughs> subjects. Is it music education, fine arts uh, education? But learning as a whole is a creative uh, process and as I already mentioned what we learn depends on how uh, and uh, where uh, we learn and saying that when you have learning as a creative process uh, as a whole then maybe we also can take into uh, account uh, art-based uh, methods because they open specific spheres of uh, experience and uh, de uh, development. I would like to give you very few arguments why I think, and not only I think, uh, that uh, creative education can learn uh, from the arts and make use uh, of the arts as a uh, point uh, of uh, reference. When we are European, then also we can see that the arts are a European uh, attainment which is able to irritate uh, common processes, provocate, maybe also be subversive. But it was uh, Eliot Eisner from the United States uh, who gave a few points uh, that I would like to uh, share with you why the arts could be uh, of, uh, could have a positive uh, in impact for uh, learning processes. I would like to go through uh, with you. The first is, there is more than one answer uh, to uh, a problem. This is quite dangerous for schooling because when I am a teacher and I propose a solution and I ask you to repeat that, that we have just one solution and we agree, all of us, that this uh, solution that I propose is the only one. If you take into account uh, the positions of the youngsters, then easily you can find out that may maybe there are different kinds of answers. And you cannot easily say this is of value, this is not uh, of uh, value. Instead of that, the arts make clear that you can't be just in one sense be right, but there are different uh, answers. The form and the content uh, interpenetrate. What we learn uh, and uh, how we learn, 
it is easily clear that the message you get depend on the way how they are provided. If I would sit down here, for example, and read my text in this way, you would get another message than when I try to stand up and get in contact and be uh, in communication uh, with you. If I would be 20 years old and full of uh, naive enthusiasm, maybe you also would get another uh, message by, by that. And the same thing is true within uh, school. It's obvious that the form relates to the content. The importance of uh, imagination uh, was already uh, mentioned. The importance uh, of relationships. You cannot do the arts alone somewhere in a closed job. It's dependent uh, on the uh, relationship you share with others. The importance of intrinsic satisfaction. You must have the immediate feeling, yes, this is of value. I enjoy that. I need that. I like uh, that. This very immediate feeling uh, can come up uh, when you are uh, dealing with uh, the arts. Learning is not just about uh, literal language and uh, quantification. This is the thing with not, it's not just about cognition, but also the uh, emotions uh, came in. It's also about qualitative uh, elements. Uh, it's about the importance uh, of being flexibly purposive. Uh, what means I can go directly, but I can also go the other way around and find uh, uh, the goal I try to uh, reach. And it's also about the importance of a flexible time regime uh, to release the experience uh, that one uh, seeks. What, what means uh, that, again, as the, the reform pedagogues already uh, have uh, carried out, it's not just one way uh, and one time scheme that feeds to uh, everybody. I would like to go uh, through three projects that might might give uh, some, um, some uh, ideas uh, what uh, cultural, uh, cultural projects uh, can bring. One is an easy one, school budgets for federal schools. What means that the ministry provides money for schools that want uh, to organize uh, cultural uh, projects. And the interesting point is that about 50% of the people, uh, or 50% of the schools, do not take part in the program. And we ask the schools, why didn't you take part? And they just said, we have other priorities. We are not interested uh, in that. What we learn out of the reactions of the in interviews uh, that we made was uh, that to improve the situation for uh, school activities, uh, cultural activities in schools was about more autonomy uh, for schools. If the schools can decide upon the circumstances in which cultural activities uh, take place, this, is, uh, uh, this helps. The second major point is that cultural and creative education is more than the traditional subjects. It's more than music education or fine arts education uh, on the margins uh, of uh, the uh, curriculum. This half of the schools take advantage of cultural uh, uh, activities for school uh, provision. I don't know the situation here in Lithuania, but in Austria, schools are competing uh, with each other uh, to get respect, uh, respective uh, uh, pupils. And this means they have to find a particular profile. And providing cultural and creative uh, activities uh, is an advantage in that. And I also want to mention the role of, I first uh, wrote down agents, and I learned from Milda yesterday, this is not a real good uh, uh, um, uh, word. Instead of that, the role of mediators, of people, in this case, in school, who take responsibility for school activities, 
coordinate activities, trying to uh, make contact with uh, out-of-school uh, institutions. The second is about cooperation between schools and cultural institutions called cultural explorers. In these projects, new methods of pedagogy uh, were developed. It was called aesthetic research, combining the arts, science, everyday culture, and uh, the active participation uh, of the uh, learner. And it became quite clear that school has to be an open learning se uh, center, open towards cooperation, uh, for example, or in this case, with cultural uh, institutions. And this is key uh, for the success of projects uh, like that. And nevertheless, I had a conversation with one of the head teachers uh, of uh, uh, one of the schools uh, taking part in this uh, program. And it was fascinating when I experienced how his brain worked when he on <coughs> one hand said, yes, projects like that should take place. But at the same time he said, but I'm also known that in my school also learning takes place. So that means he made quite a difference between what happens within these projects, but then it comes to real uh, learning. And I thought, pa, what have we, uh, we have still a long way uh, to go. And the third uh, project is called Ruhr Atlas. It's about quality aspects in the Ruhr area in uh, Germany. Uh, we did a kind of mapping uh, to find out what are the particularities of uh, cultural and, uh, and creative uh, education uh, in this area. Uh, and we found out that more and more it's not just about activism, that we are proud that something takes place, but instead of that also uh, define and develop quality criteria, make clear what is the effect uh, of these uh, uh, activities, what can we learn uh, out uh, of uh, uh, that. I have to hurry up, uh, I think. Uh, I would have liked to uh, talk about the problems, but I will skip uh, that and just say, <laughs> it, uh, we should be in a positive mood, and, uh, 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 just uh, stick to one uh, problem that might also concern you. This is this con considerable change of the role uh, of the uh, teacher. And the main ma message I would like to give you in this respect is the long way from detecting, detecting weaknesses uh, to fostering strengths. We, and myself, I am a teacher too, we had been trained to find out where are your weaknesses. <laughs> uh, how can I select, uh, how can I make clear that you belong to and you do not belong uh, to. And now a new uh, foundation of uh, the job of a teacher appears that is about uh, fostering uh, strengths. And this has quite consequences uh, when the teacher is not on anymore the monopolist of knowledge, but instead of that, the facilitator uh, of learning processes. As a co-researcher, helping the, uh, the students uh, to do their own research and bring it in a respective uh, frame. The teacher as a uh, moderator, and what for me is the most important uh, thing, the teacher as a trustful backbone in risk-taking. I am here and I am responsible for you. You can trust in me in your uh, learning processes and not know, I, I do not know uh, everything. Coming almost uh, to the end, uh, what we can uh, expect, I am convinced we are going in the direction of a new culture of teaching and uh, learning and this will be cooperative, it will be project-oriented, it will be interdisciplinary. And there will be also a new combination between practice and reflection. As a teacher, as a learner, we are not just doing things, but also think what we are doing, under which circumstances we are doing, what are the traditions, uh, uh, what are the outcomes. 
There is a new uh, generation also of education programs in cultural institutions, what means we are not anymore alone. Schools do not have anymore the monopole of learning uh, processes. There are other institutions and we relate uh, to that. It goes together with the importance of informal, uh, uh, informal education uh, provisions. It's just 20, 30 percent of that, what the youngsters receive uh, today in school. The majority, the most things what children are learning today, they do out of school, they do in an informal uh, way, uh, and we have take, uh, to take into account uh, of that. And this means also broadening the uh, qualification, uh, as I already mentioned, from knowledge transfer. Uh, to the acquisition of uh, competences. Let's keep in mind, and again, my conversation with, with Milda uh, made me insecure when my first uh, uh, advice would be that good solutions do not come from above. Creative Partnership Lithuania is a counter example uh, for uh, that because it uh, was provided by the political uh, will, but all together, I would say creative education is also about emancipation. It's about the professionalization uh, of the sector, defining their own interests, de defining their own strategies, and finding new ways of cooperation uh, with the other fields. I do not have to repeat, uh, take advantage uh, of the arts, you are not alone. I think you can experience that uh, here. Uh, you do not have to reinvent the wheel by your own. You have partners around. You experience the strength uh, when you are working uh, together. But this old image of the teacher getting in the classroom, closing the door, and then I'm alone with my pupils and my students. Forget about uh, that. This will, won't bring any uh, future. You are not alone means you are in cooperation. Be on a par with each other would mean that school is a strong hierarchical uh, system. We all think from up to down, from down uh, to up. Is it in terms of raisonnement? Uh, is it in terms of uh, giving uh, assignments, but finding new ways of equally balanced uh, conversations. And this starts with the so-called important subjects like mathematics, languages, and then the others on the margins. And mostly it's about the music, dancing, and so They are not so important. So it's, there is quite an Im imbalance. But there is also an imbalance between teachers and students, they bring in quite a lot of poten potentialities uh, and how to deal uh, with that, as I already spoke of the dimension of a um, co-researcher. I find very important to define transparent objectives. You do not have to save the world. Uh, you do not have to uh, find for everything uh, a solution. The clearer and your more transparent you can make your uh, aims and objectives, uh, the better. Learning, the only chance to learn is by doing mistakes. If you are right, you just go on and repeat that again and again. The only chance to think about, ha, something happened and it wasn't the, the result I expected. Make use of uh, mistakes. Remain curious, be brave, and enjoy. Coming back to Mr. Lucrez, I don't know if you already knew uh, about the actual problems uh, of uh, education, but I found a quotation in his poem, if you do not dare to trust your senses, the pillars of life will collapse. Maybe this can be, in a positive way, a motto for this conference. Thank you very much.